Hi, I'm Celine Tulip, and I'm going to give you a brief overview of how strings work in Java. Okay, so strings are used really, really commonly, really frequently in Java to pass information around, etc. And because they're used so often, even though they're not primitive variables, they are a class and you create string, string objects, because they're used so often, Java has put in some shortcuts to make them easy to use. And probably the most important one that you've seen and not really maybe thought about is the fact that you can create a string um, in this way. So looking at this line, string my string equals ABC. You've done this many, many times. What you probably didn't really think about is that this is actually equivalent to the standard way of creating objects, where we call new, give the class name, and pass in some parameters. Both of these lines of code have the exact same effect. They create an object reference variable called my string, and this is just a box that's going to have a pointer. It's either going to be null if we don't give it an object to point to, or it's actually going to point at a string object. In this case, in both of these cases, we've actually created a string object. Here it is. We've put the letters ABC in it, and now my string points at ABC. Both of these lines of code do the exact same thing. This one is obviously faster to type, and we use it all the time. The most important thing to know about strings in Java is that strings are immutable. Now, that's maybe a word you've never heard before, and what it means is that the strings cannot be changed. So what we mean by that is that inside of a string object, there's a series of character that make up the string, such as A, B, C. Once we've created the string object and put those characters A, B, C in that object, we can never change it. So we can't suddenly say, oh, I want that C to be a D and make it be A, B, D. The only thing we can do is say, I want an A, B, D string now, so let's take the A, B, C string, make a copy of it, and change the copy. So. Um, it also is important to note that the object reference variables to a string, such as, in this case, my string, we can change what this points at. We could say, no, I don't want this to point at ABC, I want it to point at some other string object. So that is allowed. We can change the, what the reference variable points to, but we can't change the characters inside of a string object once we've created it. So let's have a look and see how this works. In this example, we have four lines of code. We create a reference variable adjective one, see here it is, and we create a string object and we put the letters fun for fun inside it. So here's our object, it's got fun. This equal sign here assigns adjective one to point at fun. And we print out Celine is, and we print out adjective one, we can see down here it says Celine is fun. This third line of code here on line 22, we create another string reference variable. This one's called adjective two, and we assign it whatever's in adjective one. Adjective one is pointing at fun, so after this line ex executes, adjective two is also pointing at the fun string object. And so when we print out this line, Bruce is, adjective two, it is still printing out Bruce is fun. So that's fairly straightforward, nothing really surprising there. Let's see what happens when we start changing things. So here, these four lines of code are exactly the same from the last slide. Now, what we're doing on line 25 is we say adjective one equals awesome. This has the effect of creating a brand new string object that has awesome in it. And the equal sign here has the effect of changing what adjective one points at. So adjective one no longer points at fun, now it points at awesome. So when we print out Celine is and we print out adjective one, this third print statement says Celine is awesome. Note, of course, that when we print out Bruce is and we use adjective two, adjective two is still pointing at fun. So what's important to note here is that nothing is changing in the objects, but these reference variables can change what they, which string objects they point at. Okay, third example. Um, in this case, these lines of code are the same. We've added lines 29 to 31. Here, we're doing the same type of thing. Now we're saying adjective two equals wise. So this has the effect of creating a new string object called, and, and it has the word wise in it. And the equal sign here has the impact of changing what adjective two points at. So it no longer points at fun, now it points at wise. Now if we look at this picture over here, you might say, huh, now there's nothing pointing at this fun string object. So what does that mean? 
And if you're familiar with garbage collection, then you should know that because nothing is pointing at this string object that has fun in it, this will eventually get garbage collected and it will just disappear. Okay, again, to, to really summarize these points, which are important, these things that say awesome and wise, these are string objects. They can never change. The letters in them cannot be modified. Adjective 1 and adjective 2, these are string reference variables. They can change. We can switch what they point at. That's totally allowed and easy to do. So the important point to remember is that none of the characters in the string object ever change once that string object has been created. Okay, so now that you understand this basic concept about strings being immutable, that might make you wonder, well, how do the methods on a string object work? because many of the methods that you might look at in a string class sound like they're going to change a string. So for example, substring sounds like it's going to change the string and, and get rid of part of it. Um, to lowercase sounds like it's going to take the string and change all the uppercase letters in it to lowercase. What's actually happening with many of the string methods is that they're creating a new modified copy of the string and returning it. So note that these methods return a new string object. So let's see how this works. First, let's see what happens when you don't understand this. So in this example, we create a string reference variable called alphabet, and we create a new string object that has the letters of the alphabet in it. When we print this out, it prints out as we would expect. When we call the to uppercase method on this string object alphabet, um, we would think that this would go through and change small a to big A, small b to big B, etc. And yet, when we go and we print out alphabet, if we look down here, we see, huh, alphabet's still lowercase. It looks like the method didn't work. But if you're paying attention, you might notice the yellow underline here and the little warning sign. This is NetBeans telling you, you don't have a compile error. Maybe you mean to do this. We don't know. But it's a little bit weird that this method returns a string and you're not capturing it. You haven't got any way to get the string that this method creates. So let's look at how this is supposed to work. The corrected version looks like this. Again, we create the string reference variable. It's called alphabet. We put the letters in it. We print it out. That's all fine. Now we create a second string reference variable. This time we call it upper alphabet and it captures the return value. So here now we call on the alphabet object, we call the to uppercase method. This creates a new string, which is this string, but all uppercase, returns it, and that gets assigned to this upper alphabet reference variable. So when we go and we print out upper alphabet, we see that upper alphabet is actually all capitalized. If we also had a statement down here that said system.out.println alphabet, we'd see that alphabet is still lowercase. Okay, so let's look through a couple of common string methods. Substring is something that you might often use. We pass in an index, and what this does is it creates a smaller string starting at the index until the end of the string. So in this case, if we have alphabet, and then we say we want the last half of the alphabet, we can pass in the substring of 13, because there's 26 letters in the alphabet, so we pass in the substring of 13, and it returns the last half of the alphabet from index 13 on to the end of the string. When we print out the last half of the alphabet, we see that we get this. You can also call substring with two indices, so it gets from start index to end index. So in this case, we call partial alphabet the reference variable, and we call the substring 1318 on our alphabet string and it's going to return a small string that goes from between these indexes. When we print out partial alphabet, we see that it prints out N-O-P-Q-R. Um, another common string method that you'll use a lot is concat. That's short for concatenate, which means put two things together. So we can call concat on a string object, passing in a second string, and it will take the two strings and mush them together, return a new string that has both parts. So let's look through an example here. We create a reference variable called first name and a string object that says Celine. And so that's what first name points at. When we print that out, we see it prints out. We create another reference 
variable called first and last name. And then we call first name dot concat and we pass in another string. This one is space la tulip. Um, and it will put those two together, return it in a new string that gets assigned to first and last name. When we print out first and last name, we see that first and last name is Celine La Tulip. Note again that if we just print out first name, it's still just Celine. This calling first name dot concat does not change first name at all. First name remains the same because strings are immutable and we can't change it once it's been created. Uh, char at is uh, a method that returns a character at the specified index. So in this case, here we have our alphabet string again. We print it out, we see it prints out. Then we create a character primitive variable called letter and we call alphabet.char at and give an index. In this case, I gave seven. It's going to get the character at index seven. That's going to be the eighth character in the string because remember we index from zero and it's going to return it and that's what's going to be assigned to letter. When we print out letter, we see that it prints out H. Replace is another method that's useful. It allows us to find all instances of a specific character in a string and replace it with some other character that we want. So in this case, we're going to use first name Celine. We print it out. Then we're going to create a modified name, string reference variable. We're going to call first name um, and we're going to call the replace method. We're going to pass in E and say we want to change all instances of E to the letter O. Um, that will create a new string with those letters replaced and assign it to modified name. When we print out modified name, we see that it prints out Colino. When we print out first name, again, we see that it still just prints out Celine. That hasn't changed. Finally, the last topic to really cover in basic string uh, manipulation is thinking about how do you compare strings. Often you have a couple of strings and you want to know if they're the same or if one is alphabetically before the other, that kind of thing. If you wanted to know whether two strings are the same, you might think that you could do this. I've got string fruit one equal to apple, string fruit two equals to apple, and I want to do a comparison the way I would compare two integers with the equals equals sign. This is a really bad idea. It usually will not do what you think it will do. This will actually compare whether the two object reference variables are pointing at the same thing. So that's not what you want to know. You actually want to compare the contents of the string, not whether the pointers are pointing at the same object. So instead, we use the compare to method on a string. So the compare to method, you call on a string, passing in the string that you want to compare it to. And this will return zero if the two strings are identical. It'll return a negative or a positive number depending on whether the, this string is before or after the string that's passed in. So as an example here, if we have fruit one equals apple and fruit two equals apple, we call fruit one dot compare to fruit two. It is going to say, yes, these two strings letter by letter comparison are the same. And so it's going to return zero. So this is going to be true and it's going to print out strings are the same. It's important to note that compare to is case sensitive. So if we change fruit two to be small a apple and we do this, it is not going to return zero. These two strings are not going to be considered the same. And so this prints out strings are different. Now, maybe that's what you want, but sometimes you might want to say, well, I want to consider these two things to be identical. I don't care that a is small in one and capitalized in the other. In that case, you want to use the compare to ignore case method. And here we have capital A and small a, but we use the compare to ignore case method. And this time it's going to go through letter by letter and it's going to say, yeah, these are the same because we're ignoring case. And so this will um, return zero. And so this will be true and it will print out strings are the same. So to summarize, it's really important to remember that string objects are immutable. The characters in a string never change once that string object is created. String reference variables, we can change. We can make a reference variable point from one string object and change it to point at some other string object as often as we want. And most of the string methods that you see that look like they're modifying the string, they actually create and return a new modified copy of the original. All right, hopefully that helps you and you have a good understanding of how strings work now.